So thank you so much for, I think this is our sixth session today uh, for joining me. And uh, today we'll be talking about how to teach writing of the research essay. And it's slightly connected to what we talked about the other day about uh, writing as a process. And then in the process of doing this, we'll also be talking about what can we do to make sure that our students don't plagiarize in the process. Now, as we talked about writing as a process, you already are familiar that writing, if we consider it as a process, then it has <clears throat> the pre-writing phase you know, which is brainstorming and thinking about a topic and coming up with a thesis statement. Then there is the research phase, which is also pre-writing. And then you start composing your essay and then you revise it and finally you have a finished product. That is what we are trying to then practice as we teach it to our students in the process of writing a paper. Now, those of you who went and uh, watched the video that I created of our last session, in the description of it is a link where I have basically uploaded all the resources that Dr. Kaneen had created about this topic. And you are free to use them for yourself as well as for your classes, for your curriculum. And I'll upload more resources there. But that's the link that I would recommend you to use if you are looking for more resources on this. Now, what this whole thing presupposes is that at your institution, there is a writing class that is offered to all students and that you have had somewhat of a training in teaching how to write. And that you're not necessarily just concerned with the outcome. You don't give a topic to your students and, you know, 12 weeks later they turn in a paper. That will totally defeat the process. What it requires is for you to be there from beginning till the end and the students to, to individually and then collectively follow the process. So when you're teaching writing, let's say writing of an analytical or argumentative paper, the first conversation that you will have with your students, which is a pre-writing conversation, is going around the classroom, giving them the parameters of what is expected, what do you want them to do. So you have to give a handout which says, okay, this paper has to be 10 to 12 pages, must use 10 academic sources, must argue for or against something, you lay down the parameters. And you may even develop a rubric where you decide how many points will be given for argument, how many points will be given for correct grammar, how, so that the students have a rough idea of what is expected and how the paper will be assessed these criteria you give them in advance. And then the early sessions about writing the paper will be your pre-writing sessions. So in that, you, you can have a general discussion where everyone shares, this is what I want to write about. This, these are some of my favorite topics. You can give them your ideas, but in the classroom, you can divide them into smaller groups and they can talk to each other about their paper topics. Now, to keep them accountable, what if, if it's a group, at the end of the class session, each person must turn in their notes, what have they decided. They can either email those to you or they can take a picture or send those to you but just tell them that the notes that they take, you need to see them, maybe initial them so that they can save those notes for the final package that they will turn in. 
Now remember, we are trying also to make sure that they don't plagiarize. So the more record keeping they do of their work, the more likely it is that they will get invested in the paper. They will have to prove that they started from this stage and then brought it to finish. Now, after they have done their group discussions and you have talked to them about their possible topics, that is when you will have a second class session where they finalize their thesis statements or their controlling ideas. Okay, and you will have to help them about how to craft a thesis. A thesis statement is pretty much simply a statement that tells the reader what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and why does it matter. Okay, now in the process of crafting a thesis statement, you also have to encourage them to think of the audience. Who is it that they are writing for? Who is their intended audience? Because that will also decide the topic, but will also decide the vocabularies and languages that language that they will employ. So after they have chosen their thesis topic, even before that, you have to either take them to the library or you have to encourage them to go to the library to do preliminary research. And that research is meant to, okay, I want to write about, you know, Bano Kudsiya's Raja Ged. What is it that has been said about the novel? Who has published? What, what about it? I mean, of course, they have to read the novel first. And the preliminary research will give them a general idea of you know, what has already been said about it? How many articles are there on this one particular novel? And are those accessible? And of course, they either print them out or download them because they will have to read those because that will give them an idea of what others have said about this particular topic, about this novel. And then that will also give them an idea of a thesis statement because if they read and research, they will find out that there are certain things that they could even say better or say differently or things that have not been said about a text or about a situation or about a novel. Now this we are talking about three or four class sessions. But keep in mind that taking them to the library <coughs> yourself or arranging it with the, someone on the library staff to give them a tour. If there is a computer lab in your library to show them how to use it, what would it take to get access to those computers and to the internet? Even showing them on their phones, you know, how to do, how to search. Generally, uh, now in Pakistan, most databases are bought centrally by Higher Education Commission and they are offered through the digital library that they have. I think most libraries in Pakistan, university libraries, make those resources available. Part of it is for you to basically take your students to the library and show them how to look up the things that they want to write about on, first of all, on the paid databases that your university owns or HEC owns. And then if, if they are not available, then you go to the free online sources. Don't do just a general Google search. Go to Google Scholar, do a search there. Do a search on archive.org, which is one of the world's largest open access resources. Go to directory of open access journals and see if there is any particular journal that is of interest to your students and their topic. You will have to show them how to look up different kinds of sources. You can't just say, go find out. That's bad teaching. Um, that's part of teaching how to write. Now, after they have done their research, you can also create a, a minor 
assignment that they turn in and that is they keep their research journal, right? They just wrote right down, today I went to the library, I found these five articles, I found these four articles. But that kind of makes them a little bit accountable and it kind of forestalls any attempts at plagiarism. Because the thing with plagiarism is that they, if we just are interested in the end product, they can copy paste it and they can, you know, buy a paper from someone. But if they are recording their path to the paper, then the moment they de deviate and turn it, turn a paper on a completely different topic, turn in a paper, they'll have to justify it. How is it that you did research on this topic? You turn in, turned in this journal. This is the thesis statement that you turned in. These are the 10 sources. And you, you are going to write about Shakespeare's much ado about nothing. And then you're giving me a paper on, you know, the hunger problem in Africa, right? So that forestalls against any attempts at plagiarism towards the end of the process. Now, after they've done the research, after they've been introduced to the databases, you've already told them how many research articles they need to cite in their paper, what length it's going to be. They will then, some professors ask them to write an annotated bibliography. I never did that. But if you want, an annotated bibliography is nothing other than they listing their 10 sources and giving you an explanation of what one source is about, what does it cover, why is it important to their project, and then. Now, throughout this process, you have to have points for these. So initial workshops where they turn in what they discussed, five points for that. You know, going to the library, doing research and turning in a research journal, 10 points for that. So there are 15 points already gone even before you've started writing your paper. Then crafting your thesis statement, discussing it, right? Another five to 10 points. So you're spreading these points because you're emphasizing that the process is important. But they also know that they cannot just turn in a final draft and get full 100 points. The points are connected to the process itself. Then we get to a point where now they have researched their resources. They have focused on their thesis statement. What do they, what is it they want to do? They've had class discussions and that is when you teach them to write the first draft. Now, every paper has a certain, I wouldn't say there is a set structure, um, but a paper must have, you know, a thesis, a brief introduction. Don't start with, with generalities. Don't let them start with human beings have fought for ages and all that. No, start with a brief introduction. What is it that they are writing? Why? And what is it that they'll be arguing for or suggesting in their paper? That should come in the first paragraph. Ask them about it. You know, what question, the why question and how, right? How are they going to accomplish what they are suggesting in their first paragraph? I'm not sure how do you do that. I encourage my students to use the first person. It's important to let them develop their own voice. I've noticed that even in some dissertations, um, uh, people don't use the first person. They just, this researcher or this research will do this. And, uh, I encourage my students to use the first person. See if you can permit them to do so. It's easier to write in first person, but also it kind of gives them a sense of ownership. Then in the second paragraph, they start thematically explaining what is it that they are doing. And they could basically say, you know, first let me introduce you 
a bit to the novel that I'll be discussing and they just give a brief summary of the novel when was it published who are the main characters and then from one paragraph to the other paragraph first of all each paragraph must have a topic sentence a topic sentence is that sets the stage for what will be discussed in that paragraph and what it also helps them in the process is it helps the students focus because at any given time in a given paragraph when they when they are writing something and they need to know whether they are on topic or not all they need to do is to look at the first sentence and it tells them oh that's my topic sentence uh, i've deviated from that let's save these thoughts elsewhere focus on my topic sentence and then at the end of each paragraph there has to be a transitional phrase or a signaling phrase you know having discussed the plot of the novel I would now like to focus primarily on one main character and then you go to the next paragraph topic sentence you know so and so is the main character in this novel and here are some of his attributes the first one is that he is you know disintegrating so that chapter is that paragraph is about that don't be formulaic it's not a five paragraph essay it's an essay that is going to be 10 to 12 pages long but each paragraph is connected to the topic sentence then all paragraphs in one way or the other must point to the thesis itself how are they supporting the thesis directly or how are they connected to the thesis indirectly and when you encourage them to do that in the very early stages of the drafting process so if they are writing the first draft don't worry about grammar don't worry about ye yahan pe aapne shall likhna tha will likh diya or ye no just see if they are developing their ideas correctly now to further help them in the drafting process you can also have a couple of workshops uh, one way of doing a workshop is where they sit in groups and they pass their papers to each other right and then i read your paper you read my draft and what that does is it it lets them hear their own writing in someone else's voice and they can take notes as others are reading it and when they read it aloud then they can tell each other share with each other what could be improved now remember you have to train your students to be in workshops okay you have to give them certain rules what not to say what not to do obviously no one can just turn around and say this is a stupid idea or uh, they have to be encouraging and kind and generous to each other and and they have to learn to point out any improvements without you know just uh, totally shutting down their their classmates so that etiquette also of course will have to be taught and the only way you can really teach it is if you practice it yourself you know if your teaching style is no shut up i will say what i want to say chances are you can't teach kindness and generosity to your own students or but they have to be you know polite to each other they have to be kind and generous only then the group work would work now after they have written the first draft they have workshopped it with with their colleagues in class and they have tweaked it a little more then they turn it in to you you will then take a careful look at the first draft this is the stage where you're not just giving them advice you are also trying to figure out are they on the right track you already have their research journal you already have the brainstorming exercises that they did clustering and everything else you have a record of how they got to the first draft and you read it you know in con in concert with what they've already produced and you give them your comments your suggestions of how to improve and how to revise 
You can also give them some grammar advice at this stage or, you know, to figure out how to fix the language, but mostly conceptually where they are. And then you return the drafts and you give them time. Two weeks time, you come back and resubmit a revised version. In the meantime, while they are in the class, you're also teaching them other techniques of writing. You probably have a textbook. You probably have a syllabus. They keep following that. But part of it could also be paper workshops continuously as they are revising it, right, in groups and then sharing with you as you run the class. And then in two weeks, let's say, they turn in their second draft. Now, in the second draft, what we used to do when we taught it, they will turn in the whole package. They will turn in their first draft so that you know how much revision they have carried out. They can't just turn in the same paper, right? Now, and they also know that the second draft has its additional, its own points, right? 50 or 100. They have to show you that they have revised it and either incorporated your suggestions or have a reason for not incorporating them, right? And then you grade the second draft, right? And after that, after you've given them feedback on the second draft, you can give them two, three weeks or one week where they finally put together the final revised draft of the people. Now, remember, you already gave them a guideline of what, how you will assess it, what needs to be there in the paper, right? So part of it is they have to attach with the paper their early pre-writing exercises, their research journal, their annotated bibliography, their first draft, their second revised draft, you know, with your comments on it, you know, the, the, a copy of that. And then at the top of it is the final revised version of their paper. So you, you are not just collecting, you know, four pieces of paper at the end of a semester. You have a body of work. Now that is what will make sure that your students have not plagiarized because they cannot get a full grade simply by turning in a final paper. And you have to constantly remind them of that. Because if they miss the process, they are not learning. But pragmatically speaking, if they miss the process, then they cannot reclaim the steps that they missed. Now, in certain cases, if someone was late in turning in their first draft, of course, as a teacher, you can you know, give them extra time or whatever, but you can never really just grade the final product. And if someone comes to you and says, well, I missed all those classes and please grade my final paper, you should have it in your syllabus and on paper where it says very clearly that in order to make a full grade on a paper, here is the division of points. Invention exercises, 10 points. First draft, 50 points. Revised second draft, 52 points. Workshops and reports, 10 points. Turning in a research journal, 10 points. Turning in an annotated bibliography, another 10 points. So there is a breakdown. So it's easier to convince them why didn't they make a good grade because you can point to, okay, you missed these 10 points, you missed these 10 points. And now the final outcome, the final paper is just 100 points out of 300 points, right? So that gives you a way of explaining why they didn't make the grade that they made. But it also encourages them to invest in every stage of the process so that they don't just go and buy a paper online and turn it in at the end of the semester or in the middle of the semester. That is what we are trying to encourage through these exercises and through by this step-by-step -step process. Now, based in my experience, 
the step that I thought was the most important was when our professors took us to the library and when I took my students to the library. Because sometimes we don't even know, like, you know, what are the basic methods of doing a good search, even on Google. So if you're lucky enough to have a library that is good enough at your institution, and if you have any trained research librarians, they can show them exactly how on the library website, which page, how will they access any given database and how will they perform a search on it. If you don't have a librarian, a research librarian at your library, you yourself can train yourself about how to use databases, how to familiarize yourself with your university's library website and whatever databases are available there or the Higher Education Commission's web website and their digital library so that you can sit with them in front of a computer and show them how exactly to perform a search. That, to me, was the most important step in learning how to do research and then incorporating it in our writing. And I, I highly recommend that you, 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 know, you should do that. And then following the entire writing process and asking for their homework related to each step and forming it into a folder which they will turn in when they have the final draft ready. These steps, anyone who teaches steer writing here, most of the professors and even graduate teaching assistants, they follow these steps in teaching how to write a research paper. And uh, those are all the thoughts I have about, you know, this particular topic. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Now, do keep in mind, as I pointed out the other day, I am not a rhetorician or a composition expert. Most of what I'm sharing with you is based in my experience and based in what was taught to me as a student and the practices that I followed when I taught first-year writing or when I taught how to write a paper to my students.